Hey guys, so this is a video I've been wanting to do for some time now. Um, I've had my printer, this this is my GTEC Aluminum Prusa i3. I've had it since, what is it, February of 2016. And it has done a great job. But for quite a while now, I have been wanting to upgrade the power supply. Uh, it started from back last year whenever I was starting to print with PETG and I, I was wanting to reach about 230 degrees Celsius and it just wouldn't quite reach it. So I was able to print what I needed to print at 225 degrees and it, it was stable enough on the temperature where it would do it. And everybody said, well, it was the, the PID tuning, it was this, it was that. The fact of the matter is, this is the power supply that came with it. And anybody that's in 3D printing knows this is just the cheap, run of the bill power supply that comes with a lot of the different kit printers. It was supposed to be a 20 amp supply, and as you can see right here on the label, it's a 15 amp supply. Um, it just doesn't have the power to, to hold the temperature that I need to, to hold at. So, like I said, I've been trying to say for a while now, this has been a project I've been trying to do for about two months. And every time something comes up that stops me, <laughs> hopefully today is the day I can get it done. What I did is I went to Fry's Electronics and I picked up this EVGA 450B ATX power supply. And the reason why I didn't cheap out and, and went ahead and went with the EVGA brand, this was on sale for I believe $49 at the time. To buy this in a 20 amp was going to cost that much. Um, I could probably go on eBay and maybe find one for 30 bucks, but I wanted something that was going to be a little bit better. So by going up to the 450 watt, what it's actually going to do, if I can get this where it'll actually see it, it's going to give me 35 amps on the 12 volt rail, uh, which is going to be for the, the ATX uh, four pin connector. And that's what I want. I want something that's going to be able to power the, the heated bed, and my extruder and not be wanting for for more power so that's what I'm going to do today I'm gonna to go ahead and get this wired up and uh, try it out and hopefully it works okay so to get, to get started let me go ahead first off we need to change this out anyway I'm gonna go ahead and cut off my filament here and get it out of my out of the way and let me go ahead and turn the printer around so you can see what I'm dealing with here. Now, as far as boards go, I set my power supply over here. This is the, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. I will put it there. <laughs> yeah, that board. This is a GTEC a, a, a G board that... Um, was on a lot of the earlier printers. They have since upgraded it to a whole different uh, model board, one that actually has active cooling and everything else. This board here is just pretty much the bare minimum board that they that they produced. So what I'm going to do, it uses a four pin power connector, same as what you'd find on a motherboard on a computer. Let me get it disconnected here. It's an ATX connector is all it is. And it's supposed to be wired up the same. So it's supposed to be 12 volt, 12 volt, and then negative and negative on the bottom side of it. So we'll find out if that's actually what's going to be on this, this new power supply when I get it unboxed. Now the cool thing about this is now I can just get this all out of the way and not have to worry about all these loose wires hanging out on my desk. <laughs> Throw that off of the, to the side. Okay, so now... I don't think I have a knife with me, but that's all right. Go ahead and get this opened up. Now, if I did my homework right, this power supply should have um, modular or semi-modular design, which means I shouldn't have a ton of wires hanging out whenever I get done with it. Which it's still going to be better than what I've what I've had. <laughs> Look at that in a moment here, and I've got my 
power there. Let's see. Toss that off to the side. Right off the bat, you can tell the difference. I mean, this thing's going to have a fan on it. Something that my old power supply did not have. It's a nicer design. I can, if I don't attach this onto the printer, I can set it on my desk and not worry about the place catching on fire while I'm gone. I thought this was going to be a modular design, but it's not. So I'll have to do something with the, the cords later on. But all I'm going to be wanting for the cables here... Let's see. Okay, so this is the was a 24 pin. Yeah, it's 20 plus four. It says right there uh, for a motherboard. I'm gonna have to jump a couple of these wires in order to make this thing work, but that's all right. So that's gonna be CPU. Let's see. Yep. So it's gonna be. Well, these connectors right here, which if we look from the plug side of it, let me pull my old one up here. See, I've got that. Uh, see, those are off to the side on the little connector thing, but they do match up. What's this over here, though? Now, that one's going to be just a connector for that part, so I'm not going to worry about that. Let me look through the rest of them here and just see if I'm missing one that's got a straight on connector, which I, I'm not. So I'm going to just use one of these. I should be able, hopefully, that'll catch on the board over here. Yeah, it should be able to catch it just fine. I'll just uh, maybe use maybe this one so it's further away from this capacitor. Maybe over to the side of it. That way it'll connect a little bit better. But that should do the trick. Okay, now I actually bought a whole nother harness, one of those uh, extension harnesses, and I was going to wire this thing up for a jumper, but this came with a jumper. <laughs> so if I'm thinking right, if I put this on here, that should jump the pins I need in order to make this thing run. I'm just going to use my power cord from my old one, my old power supply. It's the same, same connector. Turn the switch off. It turns on. Cool. That's what I was wondering. Okay, so that should make life a whole lot easier and a whole lot faster. So let's go ahead and use this connector right here. And like I said, later on, I'll, I'll deal with the wiring later. I just want to see if this works. Okay, that did connect onto the board. I had to move the top connector portion right here, move that to the side a little bit, and then it was able to fit in. Let me see if I can bring that up closer so you can see it. I know it's spaghetti. I got to get it fixed up. But right here is the new connector. This one here, I'll put a little bit of tape or something on it, but it's up inside there so it shouldn't ground out or nothing. Okay, so let me get this flipped around and we'll power it up and see how it works. Okay, guys, moment of truth. Let's see if it powers up. Now, if you're new to, to listen to this thing, I've got a bad fan that's on the back. If I touch it after it warms up a little bit, it just the sound goes away, so it's just fine. I've got my power going to it. Now let's go ahead and preheat everything. Yeah, everything's quietening down now <laughs> the thing still runs like a top it's just that when you first power it up it's got that problem with the, with the fan on the back and the little stock fan that comes on this one these two fans here still run really good I picked those up at Fry's quite a while back 
Hey, we'll let this thing warm up, and then once it hits temperature, I'll get right back with you. Okay, so we're hitting it at about four minutes now, and everything has pretty much come up to where it's stabilized on the temperature. So let's go ahead and go to control, temperature, nozzle, let's take it up to 230. Now in the past when I've hit 230, it will take and it'll never reach 230. It'll just hit up about, oh, about 227 and then just it just starts bouncing it'll it'll go down it'll go up and it, it'll never stabilize so let's see how this stabilizes now okay so we are reaching 229 and it's kind of hovering at 229 228 227 let's see if it'll actually reach 230 Okay, so for the first time ever, this has actually reached 230 degrees, 231. Now, if everything holds true, it should just kind of bounce between 229 to 230, 231. And it should stay pretty close to it. It did just climb to 232. But I think it's going to be fine. It's, it's a lot more stable than what it has ever been in the past. I'll see if I can find that video where I where I showed this before. Um, if I can find it, I'll go ahead and I'll put that up in the right up here in the corner. But uh, it's holding steady right now at 2:30. It's not bouncing around, so that should allow me to go ahead and start printing some parts with this uh, 3D4Makers.com uh, PETG. I've been looking forward to doing this for quite some time, and this was the one thing that was holding me back and I should be able to do it now. Um, in a future video, I'll come up with some kind of a uh, enclosure to, to fit these wires in it just to kind of get them off the desk and, and keep it, things more tidy. If I ever get the, the guts to do it, I might try cutting some of these wires off. I honestly thought this was a modular power supply. Um, everything online said it was, but as you can see, it wasn't. That's all right, though. I'm fine with it. I just don't want to cut a bunch of wires off of it if I can get out of it. Um, just in case I ever do get a chance to build a, a, a new computer or something. Um, I just want to make sure that I've got a, uh, a power supply on hand if I needed it. <laughs> I just don't want to take and destroy a power supply. Um, well, let me do one more thing while I'm in this video. That way I don't have to do a second video later on. And that has to do with the power consumption. Um, I will put the link to the video I did before right up there showing the power consumption on the old power supply. If I remember right, it said at 125 degrees, or 125 degrees, take that back. It, uh, it said at 125 watts is what the power consumption was on the old one. So let me get my kilowatt out. Let me get it hooked up here and let's just see what this one's doing whenever everything's heating up. Okay, guys. Let's get this where I can see it on camera. So right now we're sitting at zero watts. I'm going to go ahead and power it on. I saw 18.4 for one moment. And now it's dropped down. And it's going to stabilize somewhere around between 12 and 14 probably. 11.9 is where it seems to be stable at. Okay, so that's just sitting there. Nothing's heating up right now. So let's go ahead and preheat for PL, or, uh, for ABS. Let's see. Prepare. Preheat ABS. 51, 50, 122, 154, 153. Okay, so it seems like about 152 is where it's stabilizing at on the wattage. 150. Okay, so we've got to remember that my old one, and I'll be sure to put that link in, in the video description and right up in here. Um, I want to say it was at 125, 127. So it's not that far off. 
And it's actually going down and kind of right now it's actually less than what it was before. Wow. <clears throat> and I'll be completely honest with you. I expected a 450 watt power supply to be closer to about 250, 300 watts. Um, and even at, at resting, I expect it to be higher than what it was. So that's not going to be that much difference on, on powers, power draw. And whenever it's needing the extra little oomph to it, it's it's got it. <laughs> yeah, it's down pretty much now where where my old one was. I'm happy with that. That that'll that'll be just fine for me. <laughs> so now that the heater is kind of topped out on one of them it's it's just hovering right at one in the 120s so it's going to top out probably about 154 155 i'm guessing and but that's not going to be for when everything is heating up at the very beginning <clears throat> so price wise as far as electricity is going to be it's it's going to be pretty close to the same as what what the old one was so i'm not going to have to worry about a, a huge drop or a huge jump in in uh, the electric bill cool Okay, guys. Well, I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care. Hey, guys. That's going to do it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. I sure appreciate it. You can do that by clicking on the link over here. Don't forget to ring the bell, too. That way you'll get notified when a video comes out. If you'd like to support the channel, please click on my Patreon page. You can support the channel from there. And if you'd like to watch one of my other videos, please give these a shot. I think you'll love them. Yeah, I think you're going to like them. Have a great day and take care. Bye.